Hi, this is TH Culhane for Solar City. Zabilla Culhane behind the camera. We're standing on our porch today on September 19th, 2009, and it is a sunny day. We haven't had a lot of those recently. That means that this solar hot water collector that we built is pumping via the solar charged battery and 12 volt pump, is pumping hot water through the copper coils that are in the bottom of this barrel and back out whenever the temperature gets up to 37 degrees, which is human body temperature, which is what the bacteria inside like. Right now, the outside temperature in the shade is 21 degrees. Following Bob Plotkin's uh, suggestion, we have gone ahead and covered the inside barrel with black plastic and then put clear plastic over that to create a kind of mini greenhouse effect. The idea being that there is carbon dioxide and methane being released from this gap here, and that would theoretically fill this area, and that's supposed to be a greenhouse gas that would help trap the heat in. At the very least, the mere presence of this plastic and this air gap would insulate somewhat. So when we measure that temperature inside, 38, 37. So we're about, uh, we're body temperature, 39 actually, 40. It's pretty hot up at the top, but that is not where the bacteria are, even though it's now up at 41 degrees up here on a sunny day. The uh, temperature down in the water itself, when I put the probe down into the water, drops back down to 20 degrees, which is the ambient temperature of the air. So even though this is well insulated, the top water area is at ambient. But that's probably because a lot of heat is escaping through here. We don't know what the temperature is deep inside where we're pumping the hot water. We're hoping that it's up to the 37 area, and that, that is why we are getting methane production. This filled up yesterday on the second sunny day. So in about two sunny days, we can get about 200 liters of gas, but we can't get any production on the days when it's cloudy and rainy here in Germany because these mesophilic bacteria shut down production at about 15 degrees. And that is what we've been registering when we measure the temperatures outside and inside the water on the cloudy, rainy days. Notice we've built a cage this time to hold the barrel and that keeps it somewhat stable and we're going to try to give this some brickage. This is the small two-stroke engine generator, 650 watt generator that we're running. Now the problem with running biogas through this is a two-stroke engine usually has the two-stroke oil with the gasoline going through the engine, through the carburetor. And we've modified the carburetor and now it's just biogas going in. So the question was, how do we get the oil in that the engine needs so it doesn't seize up and, and just completely melt the block and, and, and die? So our friend Dirk Rowland came over and suggested that one way we could do it is to put the oil in where the spark plug is. And so we did that, take just a little bit, and put that directly into the crankshaft. and then give it a turn. So that it's oiled, maybe put a little bit more. We obviously don't have much experience with this, so if you're watching this and you are a mechanic and you can think of a better way, please let us know. We're gonna try to run this for about five, 10 minutes at a time, and then we're gonna open it up and check the spark plug and make sure it hasn't gone dry because we don't wanna ruin the motor. We're going to be doing other conversions with four-stroke motors. This will never be a problem. A four-stroke motor has its own oil pan, and so it stays oiled with the oil that's in the oil pan, and so biogas runs fine in four-stroke engine conversions. But we do want to try working with two-stroke engines and experiment because in the third world, so-called developing world, uh, mostly what people have is two-stroke engines. They're cheaper, they're more durable and reliable, and uh, they're ubiquitous. So we want to work on that level. Another way that we're going to try to get oil into this is we've got two different oilers from air compressors, from paint uh, air compressors. And uh, we tried this one last time. We didn't see any oil coming through. I think maybe the velocity that you need of the gas to pull the oil out of this was too great. So we went ahead and bought another one and hooked that up. We're not filling it up because we don't want to block the gas, but this is smeared with oil. So hopefully as the, uh, as the biogas goes through, it might pick up a little bit of atomized oil. Again, the velocity might not be enough, but it's just something we're trying out to see if maybe, in fact, having these oilers in here can help out in this regard. This oiler didn't work out quite as we expected. It seems to block the gas flow, and it actually just dumped a bunch of oil into the tube. 
with this oiler uh, because of the way that it atomizes the oil just does not work with this system. So maybe somebody else will have better luck. I'm going to abandon this for right now. much oil in the engine. Because of the amount of smoke coming out. The thing is to calculate the rate that it uses up the biogas. So we got three minutes and then it stopped. It seemed like when I was adding water it increased the pressure and this got really bright. One thing we see when we remove the spark plug after three minutes is that it is pretty dry. So it's a good thing that we ran out of biogas because we could have damaged the engine. For all we know we might have damaged the engine. But uh, that gives us an indication that simply dropping oil into the motor isn't going to let it run for any appreciable length of time. Given how dry, given how dry that spark plug is. And of course it's really, really hot. We had a full tank of biogas today, almost 200 liters I would say, when we started. But we used about half of that trying to get the motor started, working with the various oilers, and lost most of it. So by the time we started, we had about half that. I estimate about 100 liters. And off of that, we ran the engine for three minutes. So if that figure holds, then a thousand liter digester, of course, would then give a half an hour of useful gas for uh, generating electricity. But that half hour doesn't mean you only get a half hour of lights. So let's say that you're in a rural village or you're in the slums in the city and you get yourself uh, a thousand liter digester and you get 30 minutes of electricity that is coming out at in this case 650 watts but let's assume that this can go up to a kilowatt generator maybe even two kilowatts you would store that energy in a battery bank and then you would use it for lights and assuming that the lights that you have only consume let's say 15 watts per bulb let's say you're running four bulbs that's 60 watts then if you did have 30 minutes of a thousand watts you basically have 500 watts to work with and you could use that 500 watts to light those light bulbs for many hours. Uh, don't know if you could do a refrigerator off of this, uh, but this is all experiments we have to try. The point is, is that the 1000 liter system, if it scales up right, if this first experiment was any indication, could provide as much as a half an hour of electricity for charging batteries and probably is enough for handling lighting needs. We'll report back when we know more. Thanks.